Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. I hope that you are getting your week off to a great start. I hope that you are uh, finishing, uh, have, I hope that you have finished off a great week from last week and you're simply carrying it over to a new week. Uh, that is my uh, desire. But even if things aren't going, sorry, things aren't going the way that you desire them to go, uh, you still have an opportunity to change that this week. You have an opportunity to change it every second with how you think, with how you speak, with how you approach life. Um, don't give up. Um, I didn't get a chance to get to you guys this morning with the normal uh, submissions and everything. Had a lot to get done. Uh, so I'm just kind of dropping some, you know, some short gems off uh, over the course of the day to help <coughs> encourage you uh because like i said uh before i, th I think I, I i iterated this i iterated this at least twice last week i'm human yes the the work that i do puts me in a situation where people always see me on a high always see me uh inspiring and motivating and challenging people to do things and uh talking about the things I believe and the level at which I believe it. And all of it's true. All of it's authentic. But I don't want you to get the idea that I have no challenges in my life, that I don't have those moments that things get dark, that I don't have those times where I'm kind of stepping back and going, what in the world is going on? I don't, I don't, I'm not exempted from that. I don't know anybody in my life. I haven't read any stories of any heroes of history. I, I haven't read of any of the people that I admire and look up to. I, any of my mentors, none of them can tell me that they were able to accomplish this, this state of existence in life where they circumvent the difficulties and challenges of life. What I know are people who simply have grounded themselves in faith, people who have a established a mindset of gratitude and a heart of thankfulness and an expectation of reaching and achieving the things that they have set out in their lives to have. And they understand that with those things comes difficulty, with those things comes frustration, with those things comes delay. I was sharing earlier today, delay does not mean denial. Because it's not coming as fast as you desire it to come doesn't mean it's not coming. It means that you are still required after you have designated something to be uh, a part of what you desire to do and be in life that you have made up in your mind that you're committed to it and that you're not going to allow any circumstance, any situation, any temporal uh, issue in your life to get you to let go of it, to get you to uh, doubt, to get you to fall back because in falling back, you you, you 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 lose your footing you lose your momentum and and you find yourself in a place that you start to uh move backwards and spiral down and you start to see things differently you start to see more of the darkness more of the delay more of the frustration more of the hurt more of the pain and as you start to feel it you start to focus on it and what you focus on you feel so the things you focus on the most you feel and see the thing is I wake up every day with a heart of gratitude. I wake up every day. I don't care what's going on. I don't care what happened the day before. I wake up with a heart of gratitude. I wake up with my mind focused and centered on everything that I have to be grateful for. And that starts with my beautiful wife. I wake up in the morning and I've said it, I've shared this before and I look over to the left of me and I see her and I immediately, I watch for her to take that breath. And when she takes that first breath with me watching her, I'm thankful. I'm, I'm literally saying thank you. I'm grateful. I'm, I'm excited about what the day is going to be. It doesn't mean that I'm not expecting challenges. I wake up every day knowing, um, wake, wake up every day knowing that that there are going to be challenges. I, I'm not a person that's sitting around waking up in the morning hoping that there are not going to be challenges. God has shown me in my life that when I am committed in the challenge, great things happen. God has shown me when I'm faithful 
in the challenge that great things happen. I don't wake up looking to circumvent the challenge. I don't wake up hoping that nothing. All I want is my wife to be healthy, my children to be healthy, and me to be healthy. And if that's good, I'm ready to go to war. I'm ready to go to battle. The things that I've ever wanted, the, the, the things that I've wanted most in life, I had to work for. It took me years of praying and, and, and preparing for my wife before I received it. There are many times I'm looking up and I'm going, okay, like, you know, it's been X amount of years and I'm preparing. I mean, literally since, you know, and, 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 and no, I don't have the, and that's just it. I don't have that perfect story. I didn't marry my high school sweetheart and we lived half, happily ever after. That didn't happen. I got to a point where I realized, man, I failed at a couple of relationships and I need to figure out what's wrong and I need to be better at what I'm doing so I can get someone better. So I decided two things. I'm going to set a standard of what I'm going to want in a woman. And this isn't taking shots at anybody in my past. This has absolutely nothing to do with them. But I'm going to set a standard so that when it shows up, I can recognize it. See, when you're talking about black women, a black woman can show up and there'll be something about her just because she's that blessed that that'll grab your attention. See, I needed something more than the person who grabbed my attention and I needed to be aware of what that was. So I decided in my mind, I was literally going to sit down and make up a list of what my future wife would have to have. And then after making that list, I came up with an understanding of something. I ran into, whoa. Then I realized I got to be a better dude if I'm going to have that person that I needed to up my game in order to have what I wanted. And so I started working on me. And so after a while, some years of working on me, I'm talking years. See, we, 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 we've got this instantaneous, instant gratification idea. We want microwave results. We want it now. Uh, we live in a world full of technology that gives us everything now. And we've lost the ability to anchor ourselves in our faith and press towards the mark. We don't do that anymore, you know, uh, and this isn't this isn't a religious thing, but I'm just using some analogies most of us can relate to. Paul said, I press towards the mark for the high for the prize of the higher calling. I press. We don't press anymore. We sit up and wish. And when it don't come, we sit up and say it's God's will. No, God sit up and uh, said nothing shall be impossible. So if we don't have it, it's because we're not pressing. We don't have it. It's also he also said because we ask not. If we ask, we ask amiss. We, we've got a lot of things wrong. We want it how we want it, when we want it. And when it don't happen, we, we lose ourselves in it. And we, 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 we lose sight of what God is doing in the midst of it. We lose sight of our ability to change things. We lose sight of the fact that what's going on now is not necessarily what's going to be going on tomorrow. So many people have folded because of momentary afflictions, because of momentary disruptions, because of momentary inconveniences. But what I can tell you is I'm glad I didn't give up. When I'm sitting back, I'm talking about in 2001, I started sitting up and saying, this is what it's got to be like for me in my marriage. This is what I want my wife to be like. This is what, and it was 2016 before we said I do. It was 2014 before I met her. It was 2015 when I made my intentions known. And, 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 and that came because I had such a clear idea of what it was that I was wanting that when I saw it, I recognized it. And even though it wasn't time yet, I knew who she was. And then I didn't fold because it wasn't the right time. And then I made some decisions after that that could have cost me the whole thing. But I didn't give up. I didn't fold. I didn't start playing the blame game. I didn't take on guilt. I stood up and just said, I'm going to be the man. And when the time came, I made my intentions known. Me and my wife didn't date before I told her I wanted to marry her. Our first date was after the fact that we were committed to being each other's husband and wife. It wasn't a date thing. I met her. I knew who she was. She had all the qualities I was looking for. I don't need to date you because getting to know you doesn't guarantee that things are going to work. Getting to know you doesn't. What guarantees is saying, does she have the qualities and does she understand covenant? Does she have the capacity for loyalty? Does she love unconditionally? Those are the things. Everything else we got to build. 
It don't matter how long I date you. If we are not going to build, it's not going to work. It doesn't matter how much I get to know you. If we don't prepare ourselves with a common goal and a common destiny, it's not going to matter. At some point, we're going to grow in different directions. We have to have a certain thing in line. Then we build it all. We fight for it all. We love each other through it all. I promised my wife that I was going to love her to life. And that's I wake up every day trying to live out that live out that promise. What am I getting at here? Don't let your momentary situations, don't get caught up in the delay. Don't get caught up in the frustration. Don't get caught up in all the things that don't seem to be going right and lose sight of the fact that you're gaining ground. Don't lose sight of the fact that you're not where you were yesterday, last month, last year. Don't lose sight of the fact that you're being advanced because you're so caught up in the pace. Commit yourself, plant your seeds, do what you got to do, cultivate it, water it, and consistently show appreciation. Because I'm telling you, the state of gratitude is the gateway to abundance. I've said this so many times. You can't receive when you're not grateful. It's like the entire gateway becomes constricted and tightened and nothing comes in. And you become more resistant and it becomes more tightened. You become more bitter and it becomes more tightened. You become more angry and worried and jealous and anxious and it becomes more tightened. Faith and gratitude loosen the gateway. Faith and gratitude loosen things and it allows you to open up and feel. Because things have to flow freely outward and inward for abundance to take place. You know, and, 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 and I, I love using my wife, but my wife isn't the only blessing. She's my greatest blessing, but she's not the only blessing. I've, I've seen and I've experienced so many things, and I can tell you the pattern. Uh, success leaves patterns. God created things to flow in pattern, patterns, rhythm, and energy. So there's a frequency. There's a pattern. There's, a, that, that, there's literally a, a pace that's called rhythm in the pattern. And when you find the rhythm and you get the pattern and you're on the right frequency, absolutely nothing in this world can stop you except you by focusing on what's not right, by sitting up and complaining. And I'm not saying to ignore something that's going on. That's, I, that would be foolish. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying trust the destiny, trust the design, trust your relationship with God. Trust that if you are doing, see, my thing is people love to talk about, I was sharing this with my wife the other day and she agreed with me. People love to talk about karma when they're hoping it brings something back on someone that did something wrong to them. But what you don't understand is karma is a method or a mechanism that simply is representative of the law of the universal law of reciprocity. What does that mean? What you put out comes back. Now, we love to talk about the negative. You know, you done did some wrong. You, when you sow what you sow, you reap. It's not just what you sow bad you reap. It's what you sow good as well. If you've been sowing good seeds, you got to know you've got a good harvest coming. If you've been sowing good, if you're putting something out in the atmosphere, that's good. If you've been blessing people, you got a blessing coming. Not no enemy or evil in hell can stop it. You've got to start believing in what you're doing and standing and trusting it. Stop looking for immediate gratification. Sometimes what you've planted is so powerful, it's going to take some time. It took me 14 years of praying, meditating, preparing, and making sure I understood what it was I was looking for before my wife walked into my life. But I had prepared for it so intensely that the moment I met her, I knew. That's everything that you, you the, the way that God creates with you is through energy, is through frequency. And I could get into the, the scientific details of how he does it through the pineal gland, how he does it. But how it literally works from the energy working up into your brain and activating the crystals within the pineal gland. 
and literally stretching them and stretching them until they expand so much that they then snap and re and compress and create this little antenna in your pineal gland that literally communicates with the energy in the world. And it literally can sit up and take the messages and the consciousness and the communication of God and transform those into images, what some people call visions and other people call dreams. I'm not talking about fantasies. I'm talking about the thing where God is literally communicating you so clearly you can see it because I saw her. I've told her this and because we were on such a frequency and so tight, she believed it because, you know, you hear some stuff like that. That's game, right? No, I'm telling you that there's a way that God communicates with you. That's beyond verbal, audible communication on a level. I'm talking about through a, a spiritual eye, a spiritual sight, the spiritual eye, which the pineal gland has been referred to as the third eye. Some of us call it the first eye. I'm talking about when you really in tune with God, it's the way you see everything. You want to see everything through that lens before you view it through your, your physical eyes. Start looking at start looking at some of the things that you consider to be challenges. Start looking at some of the things that you consider to be problems. Start looking at some of the things you consider to be interruptions through the lens and the eyes of your spiritual sight and start to see how different they look. Faith isn't a category a category a categorized concept. Believing in, in, in what's going on in your life to the point that you absolutely believe what you can't see, you still believe that's faith. You've got to have some confidence at a level that says, I don't see it, but I know it. Matter of fact, I'm going to see it so powerfully through my spiritual sight that I'm going to manifest it. But you've got to understand that the power is going to come from how you hold on, how you stand, what you decide to do in those moments that don't look like they're supposed to look. There are times I'm going through some things and I'm looking at it and, and everything I'm around, me, I'm looking at the circumstance and the circumstance ain't pretty. But see, I'm communicating with God on that spiritual level. I'm not looking solely through my physical sight. I'm looking through my spiritual sight. And when I look through my spiritual sight, I see the circumstance. But then there's something in my spirit that disagrees with the circumstance. And my spirit trumps. I start to speak it. Start to, I start to think it. I start to speak it. I start to declare it. I start to walk in it. I start to believe it in way. And people are looking at you. And they're going... I don't see it. You don't have to see it. That's the whole thing. We keep trying to confirm things with our physical sight and we're missing the bigger picture. God's trying to take you somewhere that you can't see right now. On that note, I'm going to get off of here. I wasn't supposed to go this long, but uh, I'm going to get off here. Look, life wasn't meant to be easy. What's the old saying? Everybody's heard it. If it, if it was easy, everybody would do it. See, greatness isn't about a default setting that only certain people are designed to be great. Greatness isn't a default setting. It isn't something you're born with and you just live and it happens. Um, that, that, that's not greatness. Greatness is, is something that comes from a decision to be different. A decision not to be like everybody else, a decision to move in this thing, this unique thing that God gave you, that God had planted in your DNA. Not just your physical DNA, your spiritual DNA, your emotional DNA. Some things that you just do naturally that sometimes you don't even understand. It's some of you out there right now that have stood up and your fit and your reason, your common sense and your reason told you, stop doing it because you're not being appreciated. It's okay, baby. Say, so, uh, stop doing it because you're not being appreciated. You got you pouring into somebody and they ain't paying you no attention. They not taking your 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 wealth of wisdom and, and and they're not taking you. Maybe you're giving them money and it don't seem like it's it, 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 it's helping or whatever it is. And your reason and your common sense and maybe even some of your people are telling you leave that person alone, stop it. And, but but then there's something beyond that that's saying plant and you can't even understand why you're doing it, but you can't stop. And then you look up two years later, three years later, and the thing that everybody said wasn't going to work is walking around blessed now because you poured out what was naturally in you. But but th that that's the difference. You got to you got to be willing to be different. Stop trying to be what everybody else is. Stop trying to be like everybody else. Stop trying to sit up 
and, 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 and be normal. Greatness doesn't come from normality. Greatness comes from you rising up in the gift God gave you because you got to believe a great God wouldn't give you an average gift. I, I, I always tell it, if God is great, then the gift is great. But if, you, if you've made up in your mind you're going to be average because everybody else is average, you will literally quench the gift. And you'll walk around and you'll be average and everybody will be cool with it because everybody's there. Nobody is thinking about how awesome it is not to be like you. That God gave me something that makes me uniquely special. Every last one of you, and I'm done. Your value is actually hidden in why, how you're different than everybody else. Think about it. If it's something everybody else got, how valuable is it really? It's in the things that you got that nobody else got that makes you valuable. Start valuing yourself. Start demanding that you value yourself and then automatically you will stop tolerating other people not valuing you. And then the true value will come out. People will be blessed and you will be rewarded. That's life and ain't nobody can stop that. Nobody. Oh, a lot of people are going to try, but there's a blessing in that too. So walk boldly in it. Don't give up on it. I'm, I, I came here. The whole reason I came here is to tell you it's not going to be easy. I'm not one of them people that's tell you, you say this three times, write that down three times, put a picture on the wall. It's going to be great. Shh, man, you write it down. You just gave the enemy notice. So they coming. The, no, the enemy's coming. Every, that's why you got to be careful who you tell. Because the enemy's coming. But you can't not do it because it says, write the vision, make it plain. But you got to be careful. That's the problem. We want the stuff, but we ain't ready to go to war for it. We want to ease into it, hoping we don't meet no. Man, I just want to go over here and get this nice life. I want to have this nice life. want to have this nice home. want to have this. want to have a good wife. want to have a good husband. All this. I don't want no problems, though. That ain't how that works. You can't proclaim and walk in the gift and not have the enemy try to stop you. It don't work that way. No matter how, what faith you claim and all that, you've got to know there's an opposing force in this world, in this universe. And it's not here to make you comfortable. And so on that note, I'm going to get off here. You guys have a great day. And I'm going to get off and uh, enjoy my blessings. And declare some more. And be ready to fight for them. I challenge you to do the same thing. I'm out.